Welcome to South Asia. This is Jeredi, your facilitator, presenter at South Asia Maps. This is an intellectual Chatriya channel, an educational channel that targets to bring the knowledge, the culture, geography, heritage, history of South Asian region to the audience in the form of icons, iconographic form, the images, maps and pictures so that these things are easily etched in your mind and you will learn the fascinating Hindu Buddhist civilization of the planet Earth very easily and appreciate it. This is your presenter Jeredi and if you are following me at social media channels, <coughs> excuse me for my allergies, please go to our main YouTube channel called South Asia Maps, type South Asia Maps, Jeredi. I have very fascinating postings for you to learn a lot of things like <coughs> Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Maratha Empire, the treaties in India, my special musings, reflections, Vijayanagara Empire, the railway history of India, the districts of India, the districts of Pakistan, Bangladesh, Punjab history, Punjab regions, Congress party decline, current politics, Deccan region, India under imperialism, the Islamic imperialism, Christian imperialism, Catholic imperialism, and British imperialism, Mughal Empire, miscellaneous topics, Hyderabad, Nizams, Central Province, that is Madhya Bharat or Madhya Pradesh, and Kerala, Bombay Presidency, Madras Presidency, and so on. Very fascinating and meticulously drawn maps that will enthrall you and will increase your appetite to learn Mother Bharat. Please go there, start subscribing our channel and let your friends know. With that brief introduction, <coughs> today we will continue our fascinating journey in the land of Sheri Punjab, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the land of Dharma Gurus the great fascinating land on the planet earth itself not just in india the topic of today's discussion is the treaty of lahore there were the two treaties signed in the similar time within three four years duration this is the first treaty 1846 that's why it's called the Treaty of Lahore, signed on 9th March 1846. First treaty, <coughs> two years later, second treaty was signed. Three years later, we'll come to that later. <coughs> this is one of the major events that occurred on that part of the India and that have a vast influence on today's politics, economy, our lives. After looking at the treaty and its legacy, you will have a very broader understanding of what happened, the major political, military, history or developments in that part of Bharat. What will you learn after today's presentation? Here I had redrawn the map for your benefit. Again, whenever I do the presentation, I do a meticulous care so that my audience will learn the things in a different way and different things are presented to them. <coughs> this is the Emuna River. These are the Gangetic Plains. These are Sindhu Plains or Indus Plains or Punjab Plains. For your orientation, Delhi territory is somewhere here. This is the Haryana area or Bhagar area. This is the princely states of Patiala and Naba, also called Pulkian princely states, Jind and so on. This is the majestic Sutles River, Cis Sutles princely states, 
Bahawalpur princely state that is Bahawal Nagar, bah <coughs> Bahawalpur, Rahim Yar Khan, Sis Sutles, this side of Sutles, south side of Sutles, then the Trans Sutles, we have Bias River, joining Sutles at Harike Patan near Sultanpur Lodi area or Tharan Tharan Pati area in Amrusa. This is the river Ravi, Red Cliff Line, the boundary between Darul Islam, that is Muslims' territory, and Kafir's territory, Darul Harb, symbolic representation, partition line of 1947, drawn by Cyril Radcliffe, British judge, that is the Radcliffe line, the river Ravi, the Gurdaspur district, Amritsar district, Lahore district, Shahiwal district, Montgomery district, Multan district. This is the Bari Dob area between river Bias and Ravi. Bias giants here, but historically Bias flowed like this and joined Chinab here. So the name stuck Bari Dob. That is essentially Multan district, Shahiwal district. Lahore district, Amritsar district, Gurdaspur district, and the Bias continues here, Kangra district, Kulu district, until Rohatang Pass. And Chenab River, Chenab River gathers Jilam here, Ravi here, at <coughs> Ahmadpur Siya, at which Serif Jain Sutless forms Panjnadi, Panjnad, travels 70 kilometers, Maitan Court, Jain Sindhu River. That is the broader perspective you will keep in mind. And Ranji Singh's headquarters, administrative center for Lahore. He has a many, <coughs> the Subhas like Subhaf Multan, Subhaf Lahore, Subhaf Jammu, Subhaf Kashmir, Subhaf Ladakh. Subha means essentially Persian word for a province, a smaller state of a bigger state. And Subha Peshawar and Derewali region or Derajat region called Laya, Bakar, Mujafar, Gar, Ghajikan and so on close to Baluchistan mountainous area. After this presentation you will have a clarity about a important personalities of that time. Lord Harding, the Governor General of British East India Company Bahadur at Fort William in the Gangetic Delta or Bengal Delta across the river Hooghly or Bhagirathi that is Calcutta, Fort William. Lord Harding was the Governor General from 1844 to 48. And he is a principal representative advisor who drew this treaty. Henry Montgomery Lawrence is a very important person at that time. And Frederick Curry, the government of India, that is British government of India, that is the government of East India Company, Bahadur's secretary, very important person. Frederick Curry and John Lawrence has drawn this treaty. Why this treaty was drawn means, <coughs> excuse me, Maharaja Ranjit Singh died in 1839 summer, June, a natural death. After that, anarchy prevailed in the Lahore Darbar or Khalsa Darbar. Lot of Diwans, the Prime Minister succeeded, they were assassinated. His successor Karak Singh died, his son Navnihal Singh, grandson died, and Sher Singh, the next Maharaja of Khalsa Darbar, was assassinated. Finally, the kingdom was put under the control of a young child called Dalip Singh, who was around about five years old at that time when he succeeded. So there was actually the no rule. Complete anarchy. Sardars were fighting with each other, different factions in the court, <coughs> Jamuwalias, Dogras and Sikhs and Khalsais and there was a virtually anarchy. The army, Khalsa army became too powerful, they were not following the rulers and they were 
killing and fighting with each other, dictating the stumps, the rulers. The rulers, Jindan Kaur, the mother of the Lip Singh, all the courtiers didn't like it. Said so they encouraged the Sikh army to go and fight the British. If the Sikh army succeeds, that they will get the credit. If the Sikh army gets defeated, Sikh army, Khalsa army will be subdued. That was their intention. Sutless was the boundary between Ranji Singh territories on the north, British East India Company Bahadur territories in the south. That was the Treaty of Amritsar 1809. I discussed earlier. You can check that treaty crossing that, violating that, that means when the Khalsa army crossed near Firozpur area, Sikh, Anglo-Sikh war, the first war started, around about five months or so they fought, finally Sikhs were defeated at <coughs> various places, like the war was fought in Aliwal, both war, at Sobran finally they got defeated. Buddhawal, Firosha, Murki, Aliwal, all these regions, places across the river, certainly in the Firozpur district of modern India and the Lahore also. The war finally terminated by the treaty. The peace was established between the Khalsa Sarkar at Lahore and East India Company Bahadur at Fort William. So, after the Battle of Sobran, prominent intellectuals, the advisors of the Lord Hardinge were sent, or Lord Hardinge himself was in Lahore at that time. He entered, was fighting the major command also, he was a commander in chief at that time in Punjab area, and they negotiated with the Lahore Darbar, negotiators drew up this treaty. That is the Treaty of Lahore. <coughs> so there was Islamic imperialism by the Ghaznavi Sugoris, Mughals that destroyed by the, the Maratha nationalists and they fought and defeated them. But Marathas lost with the Muslims at Panipat three battle in 1761. In the ensuing the political vacuum, Sikhs filled Punjab, British filled the rest of India and finally both of them fought. So after the death of Ranjit Singh, <coughs> Major General Bradford, who was the Governor General's representative or agent in the British area, reported to the Governor General after the death of the Sri Mant Ranjit Singh, there was a disorder in the Lahore Darbar and their course was very corrupt and the army was a disorder, disobedient to the civilian authorities. And the war broke down during the winter time of 1845 December for three, four months at these places. And now the negotiators swing into action. The principal negotiator were Frederick Curry and John Lawrence. <coughs> From the India, the British government of India side, these are the people who signed the treaty. The most prominent military leaders, advisors of that time signed the treaty. From the Sikh side, young Maharaja Dalip Singh and his representative signed the treaty. So you see the signature of Lord Hardin, the Governor General of East India Company, and Frederick Curry and Henry Montgomery Lawrence and Maharaja Dalip Singh and Bhai Ram Singh, Raja Lal Singh, he was the chief minister or Diwan of Khalsa Sarkar and principal commander-in-chief Tej Singh and they were the responsible for the loss of the Sikhs in the first Sikh war. Sardar Chattar Singh Atarwalia and Sardar Ranjur Singh Mazita and Diwan Dinanath and Fakir Nuruddin from the Maharaja Ranji Singh's Sir Maharaja Dalip Singh side and from the British side. <coughs> and what are the terms of the treaty? 
We can go and read it in the Wikipedia. That is not that important. There are many articles. The principal things that is very important as a, a normal person to you, eager to understand is because Khalsa army violated the sanctity of the boundary between the East India Company and Maharaja territories. They have to pay the indemnity. Indemnity is the fine. The fine for starting the war because because British moved a lot of their army from Bengal to Purbiya land to Punjab and they have to recruit a lot of people. They incurred a humongous amount of loss. In fact, they did it. They suffered it. The suffering was due to violation of the treaty. Before Ranjit Singh, that Ranjit Singh after the Treaty of Amritsar in 1809, he has a very cordial relations with Minto, Governor General, next to Lord Hastings, Governor General till 1823, then Lord Armhead, 1828, then William Bentick, who demitted office in 1835, then Charles Metcalf demitted office one year later, Lord Auckland, who demitted of his 1842. That means Maharaja died three years before Auckland demitted of his. And from the Auckland time on, so anarchy started. Then Ellenborough, then now Lord Hardy. If Maharaja has a cordial relations, the British has no reason, even though they have an intention to annex, conquer the kingdom, but they cannot do it because there is no causes belly means no reason for war and they don't want to go for an aggressive war which the the government in Whitehall in London may not like it and East India Company Bahadur the court of directors may not like it because there is no reason because Sikh Sarkar was in friendly relations and following all the treaty terms because six violated that they cross the river. Sutlers start attacking the British post. Now they have to pay the indemnity. <coughs> British outrightly took some territory called Dobe region. Dobe means between the two rivers. Here we have, because they are already across the river, Sutlers, Ambala here, and Ludhiana here, and Firozpur here, their cantonments. Across it called Doba region, Dob region, between Sutles and Bias, called Bistu Dob, Bias and Sutles, or Jalandar Dob. That is Jalandar, Nakhodar, Fillaur, and Hoshiarpur, Dasuya, Balanchur, and all th those areas. There is a princely state called Kapurthala, that is Sultanpur Lodi Kapurthala, that was under again a Sikh Maharaja, Sikh Raja's control, so that was not touched. So outrightly they took this area called Doba. That means the British frontier from Sutlers moved to River Bias. River Bias somewhere starts in the Rohatang Pass in the Himachali Punjab region, goes to like Kulu and Banjar, Bezor, Ma Mandi, then there are Gobipur takes a turn around the Suya near Patankot, forms the border between Kapurthala district, Gurdashpur and Amritsar, other side, joins the river Sutles because its mouth at Harike Patan here. So, enter this area, British outrightly moved the frontier from Sutles to Bias. That is one of the major outcome. Now, the indemnity part, right? <coughs> British should have annexed the kingdom itself. They didn't do for valid reasons, but essentially they made the kingdom debilitated, very weak, and so that in the future they can implement their British imperialist plans. So they demanded 100, 1.75 million, that means, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, 150 Nanakshahi, 15 lakh rupees. Nanakshahi rupees, 150, 150 lakhs. Uh, I think 15 lakhs. Among which Sarkar, Lahore Sarkar, didn't have that amount of money. 
Lahore Sarkar already has various factions and the northern region was ruled by Dogra ruler Khal, who is a tributary, a prominent courtier who was not in good relations with the court because his brother was killed, his son was also lost his life, his nephew was lost life, called Gulab Singh Dogra. He was Jamuvalia, Jammu, Katwa, Rajauri, Riyasi, all those areas he was controlled. And they said they will give all those areas to British. They gave it to British. <coughs> Still, they lacked the money, 75 lakhs. Then what the British did was they took all the hilly areas, starting with river surplus to Indus River. Lack of money made the Khalsa Darbar shed all the hilly areas to the British East India Company. And British East India Company didn't have the resources to govern such a vast areas, hilly areas. So what happened? So Khalsa Darbar paid half of the money, remaining half they didn't have it, they traded the territory. <coughs> Later, within the next week, Gulab Singh Dogra came forward, paid that money from his Khajana, Kosh or Treasury and got those areas. He made a separate treaty, we will talk about it, that is second treaty of Amritsar was declared a Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir. That was a major eventful treaty, treaty at that time that has a lot of effect in today's politics and economy, military and civil life of Bharat. We will discuss it later. That is in a sense Treaty of Lahore 1. Treaty of Lahore terminated the Anglo-Sikh war, the first war, made, <coughs> established the cordial relationships again between East India Company Bahadur and Khalsa Sarka. Remember, at the time of signing the treaty, the British army was in the Khalsa Turk Sarkas territory and British has the right other articles of the treaty. They can take over the any fort, they can take over all the guns, they can take all the cannons and they can use the enter territory area for civil military purpose just by informing the Lahore Darba. They need not get the consent, they will just inform them. And all those treaties were made essentially, it became a protectorate except in name. So the British has all their army cantonments established throughout the area. British appointed a resident to help the Maharaja, that is Henry Montgomery Lawrence. That itself is a very big fascinating story. There was a two month Lawrence brothers, senior brother is called Henry and junior brother is called John Lawrence and I have made other presentations later, we will talk about them. <coughs> so the import, so the essentially it became a protectorate of British East India Company Bahadur. Let's go and look at it. So, before we go that, what are the implications of this treaty? Just knowing the treaty, who signed the treaty, what happened, is not be that much interesting. How that affects the today's life? The Treaty of Lahore, first treaty, gave the foot entry of the East India Company in Khalsa Darbas territory. It extended their influence from Sutlej River to Khyber Pass. Remember, Khalsa Darbar controlled the Peshawar Subha, Multan Subha, Derajat Subha, Jammu Subha, Kashmir Subha and Ladakh Subha. All of them virtually came under their control influence. That is important thing. That led to the resentment of the Sikh soldiers, Sikh aristocracy in the Punjab region, they rebelled. Mul Raj, governor of Multan Subha, rebelled within few months. That led to the second 
Anglo Sikh War, Sikhs were totally defeated. In 1849, second treaty was made and Khalsa Darbas was annexed. That happened because of the first treaty. It was a predominantly Muslim populated area controlled by the Sikhs and the Khalsa territory was annexed to the British East India Company territory and designated as a British Punjab three years later that formed in that part vast Muslim population that means in 1947 as Islamic aggression Muslim aggression state rights increased pusillanimous cover this Congress leadership got totally lost they finally agreed for their demand partitioning the land if that area Punjab was under the Khalsa control that event should have not happened at all that means the Pakistan formation will not happen how the Sikh Sarkar Khalsa Sarkar that means remember after 87 British didn't annex any territory of course at that time people are Khalsa Darbaris doesn't know that that event happened later but we are projecting and looking the things from the hindsight and looking at what is the legacy that means there should have not been any Pakistan formation Pakistan means Punjab Pakistan, today's Pakistan, at that time West Pakistan, Pashchim Pakistan, essentially means Punjab. 55% of Pakistani population today is Punjabis. They virtually control everything. That means no Pakistan formation. The Sarkar, Khalsa Sarkar, if it continued, it should have a cordial relations with the government of India like Sri Lankan government across the Park Strait or the Nepalese government in Kathmandu. So essentially a friendly government. But later also we'll discuss how they might have dealt with the Muslim population. That's a different story. Essentially there will be no Pakistan formation. That means today the government of India will not be putting that much military budget in fighting because Muslims everywhere are pugnacious means warmongering their hate filled theology conversion based theology of Islam Darul Harb Darul Islam Jehiliya and Illam Mumins and Kafirs concept eternal jihad and Kafir territory Kafirs makes them very fighting pugnacious people that should have not happened so that was other legacy you can keep in mind that means no Pakistan no Khalistan that means Indiraji should have not been assassinated India should not be spending that much money on military budget Khyber is easy to protect we will have our, the fighting or taking of the Persians and Afghan should be the responsibility of that Khalsa Sarkar descendants of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. That means the Indian government should have concentrated on all its military, political talents and guarding, looking at Tibet and Chinese incursions and so on. So there are a lot of legacies. That's why it is very, very important when you study the history, you should not just study the treaty, when it is signed, who signed the signatory, Lord Harting, Henry Montgomery Lawrence, and Frederick Curry, Maharaja Dalit Singh, all his representatives, this is a part. How that affects today, the legacy is very important and I hope I made these things very clear to you today. Let's go and look at, as usual, some important things of the Treaty of Lahore. Treaty of Lahore one that culminated the first Anglo Sikh war for clarity here, Sikh war with the British. So remember, this is the British Punjab we are looking at today. 
फिरोजपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट लुधियाना डिस्ट्रिक्ट हिस्टारिक अम्बाला डिस्ट्रिक्ट बिटवीन हियर देर इज रिवर यमुना सेपरेटिंग करनाल शाहरानपुर मुजफ्फरनगर अदमीरट बुलंदशहर आगरा मथुरा एटावा मैनपुरी एंड सो ऑन राइट करनाल हियर अम्बाला वी हैव सटलेज रिवर दैट इज द बाउंड्री बिटवीन महाराजा टेरिटरीज सिक्स क्रॉस द टेरिटरी वायलेटेड द टेरिटरी कॉसस वैली द रीजन फॉर वार फॉर ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी बहादुर नाउ इन वर्ल्ड इन वार already they were strengthening the cantonment at firozpur here ludhiana here ambala here already bahawalpur princely state were their protectorate in 1840 1843 charles napier british general conquered already sin so they surrounded they are made their intentions very clear that means anybody who has a minimum political knowledge in punjab or calls other barno the british are cornering them they are prodding them into war that's what eventually happened so british already controlled sindh province sukar frontier province jacobabad larkana this is dadu districts and karachi hyderabad sindh not hyderabad nizam territory tarparka also had a british controlled territory so the british after the war british territory moved from satlej river so they got the jalandhar they got the hoshiarpur and they got the kangra this is the british territory it became overnight after the war princely state of kapurthala that is a different story and indemnity was imposed among the 150 lakhs the british only had 75 lakhs remaining 75 lakhs maharaja of jammu raj of jammu at that time paid them so six traded the land all the hilly area the chamba the katwa jammu mirpur punch muzaffarabad baramulla anantana is a valley but beyond the mountains hazar there is a indus river here because is attack river indus falls at plains at a place called attok or attack across the pashtun speaking area peshawar mardan and peshawar you see here so they got rid of all these areas or thought but british sold them to gulab singh all these territories big come the british ali maharaja gulab singh territory that is a second treaty of amritsar we look at later but that is the result of treaty of lahore one treaty of amritsar was signed within a week and during when the governor general harding just stayed there and same negotiators will look at it that is the map and here we look at it and the same map in different perspective from south asia maps and you can see here the lahore city and the ravi river and here satlej here you can see rupnagar here ludhiana here and firozpur here the british cantonments after the british kals army crossed all the wars were fought in this area aliwal budwal firosha murki and sobron and so on and six shared the territory of jalandhar and hoshiarpur and kangra and all the series and hilly areas essentially territories of the kalsa kingdom became essentially half that means it was no more a sovereign state now the british army is in the kalsa sarkar in multan suba in peshawar suba in jammu suba in kashmir suba srinagar in the ladakh because these areas belong to kalsa sarkar or their vassals like essentially the vassal maharaja raja gulab singh held jammu and ladakh and all those areas and sikh governor was there at kashmir valley so that is the maps so what did we discuss today 
we discuss about the fascinating part of Punjab history today. I talked to you about the Yamuna River, Delhi region, Pulkian state, the Haryanvi region, Prince state of Bahawalpur, and the separation line of River Sutles and the Jalandar Dobe in the Bari Dobe, Gurdashpur, Amritsar, Tarantaran and Pati Lahore and Kasur and Chunian Shahiwal Vihari, Pakpatan and <coughs> those areas, Multan, Lodh and Kanewal, Uch Sharif and Chenab River, Sindh River and the Islamic imperialism, the Mughals, Durani's, Maratha surgeons collapse at Panipat, then success of British imperialism that negotiate the report from the the frontier, the Cisatlis area, British governor's representative, Broadfoot, Judge Broadfoot, there is a disorder and corruption in the Khalsa Darbar after the demise of Maharaja Ranjit Singh in 1839. That means the treaty was signed almost six years or seven years later after the death of Maharaja and sale of all the hilly areas between River Bias and the river Indus that we saw all those areas and the many clauses of the treaty we will not go into detail they essentially de facto the Khalsa Darbar become the territory de facto means in practice still there is a de jure a minority government held by a small king the child king the lip -sync. Then we looked at the signatories of the treaty, the people who mattered most at the time. Governor General Lord Harding, who was the Governor General General 1844 to 48, who succeeded Ellenborough, who was preceded by Auckland, who has at that time Ranjit Singh died, negotiators of the treaty, Frederick Curry, the secretary to the government of British East India Company, Bahadur, at Fort William in Calcutta, and principal negotiator other Henry Montgomery Lawrence and Hardinger, and all those important personalities who signed the treaty from and courtiers of Maharaja representatives of the Lipsing signed the treaty. The Treaty of Lahore is a very major event in the political history of India, how it affected Pakistan formation, Indiraji's assassination and the military budget of India, constant Islamic street riots and gangsterism in India, that is Punjabi inspired, Punjabi Muslims inspired, Radcliffe line, all those things, Darul Harb, Darul Islam, Jahiliya, Illam, constant war with our own proselytes, Islamic converts, Muslims, our own people, Punjabi Muslims, Sindhi Muslims, Baluchi Muslims, and Pashtun Muslims, all are related with this Treaty of Lahore 1, signed on the historic day, 9th March of 1846, almost six or seven years after the passing away of Shari Punjab Maharaja Ranjit Singh at Lahore and the River Ravi. Hope you enjoyed our intellectual presentations from your articulate presenter Jeredi. Please subscribe and popularize our channel South Asia Maps and we will see you and I will take you in this fascinating journey of knowing the innocent civilization of planet Earth through South Asia maps, which brings the knowledge in the iconographic form at your intellectual Chatriya channel for your learning and intellectual pleasure. From your presenter, Jerry D. See you later.